uh, draft lottery because I felt like this was, I would say, a very interesting situation for these teams that are, are here in, in this particular order. Of course, we have the San Antonio Spurs with the number one pick, Charlotte Hornets with number two, the Portland Trailblazers with three, Houston at four, Detroit, Orlando, Indiana, Washington, Utah, Dallas, Orlando, Oklahoma City, Toronto, and New Orleans. And, you know, obviously the New Orleans Pelicans don't want to be here anymore. They want to get out of here. They have Zion Williamson. They have Brandon Ingram. They have CJ McCollum. They feel like they should be out of there. Um, and so we'll see what happens with them, especially when it comes to Zion, because it is frustrating to know that he will not be playing for your team because he's just hurt all the dang time. So uh, we'll definitely go uh, talk about that one probably at a later date, probably with Pete. Uh, but I really wanted to talk about the top four, really top five, if you will. Um, I think Orlando is in a, in a actually a very interesting spot as well because they have the ability to trade some of the picks that they have and they could potentially do something dangerous there. The one team that seems to always want to be in this draft lottery is, of course, the Washington Wizards. The question is, who are they going to draft again? Are they going to draft the same type of guard or same type of forward, 6'9 to you know, 6'10"? and plays the same position and does the same things. That's something that they're also going to need to figure out. And we'll kind of do a, a more draft analysis. Pete and I will um, on the, on these prospects that are coming up in this year's draft. Um, but really the top five, let's get right into it. Obviously without saying, without a question, the San Antonio Spurs won the NBA draft night lottery. I mean, when you think about special type of talents that don't come very often, Victor Weminyama is a talent that is something or someone, I should say, that teams dream and salivate over when it comes to a guy that is over seven feet, can handle the rock, can shoot the ball lights out. That is something that is rarely ever seen in the NBA. And the fact that they, the San Antonio Spurs, have, are going to have the ability to not only coach Tim Duncan, Mondrinobili, and Tony Parker, but also to be able to coach a guy like Victor Weminyama who could potentially and I say potentially, be a future borderline Hall of Fame. I would say at this point, Hall of Fame could be NBA champion for years to come type of player. It is a very interesting situation to uh, see there in San Antonio. Again, for Popovich to not only be able to coach Tim Duncan, but to coach Victor Weminyama and these other guys that are coming up in this year's draft. Um, we know the San Antonio Spurs game plan. They're going to send, they already know who they're going to pick. They're going to sign the card saying Victor Weminyama and hand it right to the commissioner because to me, there is no other option here. It, it is Victor Weminyama or bust. And that's something that uh, San Antonio, especially these other teams were, were hoping for. Obviously there's some great talented players on this roster. Uh, I should say this draft, you know, we have guys like Victor Weminyama, Brandon Miller, Scoot Henderson, uh, the Thompson twins, uh, Jairus Walker. I know from Houston was a big one. Uh, I believe Cam Whitmore uh, from Villanova. I know that uh, Anthony Black from Arkansas was another guy. Grady Dick is also in this draft class. It's interesting that they have him going to Utah. Um, again, so many of these other guys that you're seeing here as to who ESPN is predicting that these players will go to. Um, I know that, uh, I believe, if, let me see if he's in here. I know that, uh, just a shout out, my... Uh, Gonzaga friends after they kind of dealt with what they need to deal with. Um, I thought he was in here, but maybe he's not. Let me just do a quick search. Julian Strothard at 51. So yeah, he definitely fell in the draft. I'm assuming that he didn't really do so well in the, uh, I would say the, uh, the combine. And so the bigger question for me is really the, the losers in this draft. I would say, a loser in this draft would be Houston and Detroit. The reason why I think Houston and Detroit are the biggest losers in this is because Detroit lost so many games and they weren't able to get into at least a top two, top three position where they could draft a guy like Brandon Miller, who I feel like they would benefit from having. Um, so I'm curious to see if the Detroit Pistons might trade that pick away. Another team that should be very disappointed is the Houston Rockets. I mean, from going to getting what you thought was going to be Paulo Bancaro to now, you know, you got Jabari Smith, who's, you know, still a rookie could develop into something, but hasn't really progressed the way that they would love him to. And I know it's early in his career. So I don't think there's, we should be writing him off anytime soon, 
But you know that the Houston Rockets were hoping that Paulo Bancaro was there. And now the Houston Rockets have to deal with who's ever going to be left um, there for them. Again, according to ESPN, they have him drafting Amon Thompson, who, you know, I think could potentially fit in depending on what they're going to want to do with Kevin Porter Jr. Um, I think the question for me, though, my worry about him being there um, is really like the other guys that are on this team. You know, you got guys like Jalen Green. Can he be efficient enough to be on this roster for him? That's the question for me moving forward for the Houston Rockets is, yes, they definitely are a team that needs to decide what they're going to do with that pick because it is – Slim pickings, if I do say so myself, for them, especially if they're not going to get the top three guys, especially in Scoot and Brandon Miller. I know Pete is very high on the Thompson Twins, uh, but you know I just don't know what direction the Houston Rockets organization is going in because James Harden is rumored to come back. Uh, um, for whatever reason, he wants to go back to Houston. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons uh, that we won't name, uh, but we, but I'm sure you guys can use your imagination as to why he wants to go back there. Um, but nevertheless, like that to me, like they they need to figure their stuff out quickly and fast because at the end of the day, you know James Harden is a, is a very talented player. He can he's he's can score with the best of them. But at the same time, when you think about him and you know the future stuff that's going on, you know where does he fit in this timeline for the Houston Rockets, who are obviously so young, have one of the youngest rosters out there, and yet they're expected to you know get a guy in James Harden who's like in his you know, mid to late thirties. That's a tough sell. If you're, if you're the Houston Rockets, like, you know, what's the game plan here? Do we draft the best player available? Do we draft, you know, a team or a player that's more at the age appropriate in terms of like what they need for them? That's the biggest question that the late, that the uh, Houston Rockets are going to have to deal with. Um, in this draft class. And the reason why I say they're one of the biggest losers, not because they're not going to draft a talented player more so it didn't. It's it's more clear if they would have drafted Wembenyama or even to me Brandon Miller, uh, rather than a point guard. Because at the end of the day, James Harden is the point guard, and you know you have a guy like Jalen Green who's very inefficient. You have Alfred Sangoon who's a very good player and I think could develop into something special. And then you have Jabari Smith who's a wild card and you have no idea what he could turn into. Obviously, if he can be a stretch like Robert Covington type of player, maybe even better. Maybe Tobias Harris plus would be great. Um, you know, because I think that's something that the Houston Rockets have to decide with those with those guys. Because, like the ESPN says here on their roster or this thing, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be yawning a lot in this thing. But you know, those are the three guys you're building around. Those are your those are your cornerstone pieces as of right now. So they're gonna have to decide, you know, who fits their timeline, what players they're gonna want, uh, because I think it's gonna be a very I think it's going to be hard decisions to be made in Houston as to do you bring James Harden in? Do you not bring him? That's going to be the very interesting question and scenario. Oh my gosh. It's already starting uh, that they're going to have to figure out for the future. Uh, another loser for me is the Detroit Pistons. Like I said, obviously having the worst record and not being able to produce, I would say Brandon Miller or women is a little bit of a disappointment for the for the Detroit Pistons. But what this can do for Detroit is start up trade rumors, like start up trade conversations about what they want. Because I think the thing with the, the, the Detroit Pistons that they need to realize is that I think they have a solid core nucleus of players. They just need to decide what they're going to do with that nucleus, right? Are they going to... trying to think of the right word here but like are they going to try to build something in which uh they just need like an older player to kind of get them over the hump like get a star player and try and trade that number five pick you know do they go after a guy like bradley beal i'm not sure how much he's going to cost he's probably going to cost an arm and a leg uh, for detroit but do you bring him in and try to get him acclimated to detroit basketball or do you go after you know some of these other players that are out there in the league? Like that's the thing that the Detroit Pistons have to decide uh, moving forward. Because it, to me, like you can take this guy that ESPN is recommending in uh, Jairus uh, Walker, but at the same time, I just think that they need they they need to start planning for now. Like Cade Cunningham is the guy you're building around. Cade Cunningham is your player that you were trying to say this is our number one number two option like th this is a guy that we're building our core nucleus around 
You have so many good players, Jalen Jer- Duran. You have a lot of talented, you know, centers and bigs. Um, and like, look at the looking at their roster really quick, just to kind of talk about it. You know, you have guys like Cade Cunningham. You have Jalen Duran. You have Killian Hayes, who has surprised me a little bit. Um, you know, I've always been critical of him, but he's shown that he's grown a little bit, and you know, that's there's something there that you can build off of. You have Isaiah Stewart, uh, you have James Wiseman, who you got. Like, th- there's a lot of like interesting pieces on this team to now saying, like, could we potentially, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word to say here, but could we potentially trade some of these guys to get like a superstar player? Because at the end of the day, the number five pick for the Detroit Pistons may make a difference in the future, but at the same time, you know, I think, you know, the number five pick does fit the timeline of this player, but, you know, they're going to have to decide, is it going to be Jairus Walker? Who is going to be the player for them to to build around and to decide, like, yes, this is the guy that we want to put our eggs in one basket in. And so that's going to be the interesting scenario for the, uh, I would say, Detroit Pistons in that sense. Um, Again, let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think of the biggest winner and losers of this draft. Like I said, I think that to me, the biggest winners are the San Antonio Spurs and the Portland Trailblazers. You could say Charlotte in a sense, but really Portland, right? Because they didn't really have great odds, but they ended up getting in there. They, again, they're going to have a potential to either get Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller, depending on what the Hornets do. And that's to me, is, is a huge pickup for them. Now the Portland Trailblazers have to decide on Dame Lillard. Like, excuse me. No, who does Dame, does he continue to play for the Blazers? Does he move to a different team? That's going to be a question for everybody to decide. Uh, And really not for me, but for the people that are out there, maybe you guys in the comment section. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think that Portland should trade Damian Lillard and start building around the young guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Because again, this is going to be a very interesting scenario for for Portland and who goes to number three, is it going to be Brandon Miller? Is it going to be Scoot Henderson? That's the biggest question. Or is it the Thompson twins? I know that they are again, Pete is a huge fan of them. And to be fair with you guys, I haven't done my due diligence on those guys. I know I've done it on Ahmed Thompson just a little bit, but not enough to say like, yes, this is what he's good at. This is not what he's good at. Um, more, I've done more so with Scoot Henderson and Victor Wembanyama, just because those were the two guys Heading into this year is like these are the most these are the can't miss prospects for this year. Um, so I will be definitely doing my due diligence, I would say, um, and looking into that. So uh let's let's move on to the next conversation, of course, which is gonna be the Lakers and the Nuggets. But again, let me know in the comment section down below if your team is in the top 14. Are you excited and what player do you want in this draft lottery? Let me know in the comment section down below. <laughs> 